next thing we allow you to do is upload to YouTube. Uh, we have a direct upload, so you need, obviously, a YouTube account. Uh, when you click on Upload, it will ask you for your ID and your password, and it will go right to your uh, YouTube page. We also allow you to upload to Vimeo, and Vimeo is a, uh, a new site that has come up in the last uh, 12 months, 18 months, and it's a very popular site in terms of independent artists. So if you feel that you have a mental block or you want to see what other people are doing stylistically in the, in the independent video and film world, you should, uh, I'd recommend going to Vimeo. It has some very, very good uh, video production people on there, and you'll get inspired by some of the video they do. So we, you can become part of that crowd just by clicking on Upload to Vimeo. Uh, we have the, uh, the traditional record back to DV, uh, back to DV tape if you like, uh, if you want to go back to DV tape, as well as HDV cameras, we can go back to there and put it back to a mobile device. If you want it to go to an iPod or, or a, a PDA of some sort, you can push back to a mobile device. So those are the three basic areas uh, within the editing process, in the production process, you could say. Now, in the editing side, you'll notice, as I mentioned, I have this library on the right. In my library, the top tab is Media tab. I can go in there and show photos, or I can show video, or I can show all my media, that sort of thing. In the video side of things, uh, you can go in and just click on a clip. And when you click on a clip, it will show the preview in the preview window. So you can go back and forth and uh, scrub through that as well. The next thing that I have here is a tab for transitions. Uh, it has a number of transitions. We have a concept of my favorites. So as you do your productions, even though we have many, many transitions, you'll find that there's some in your style, in, in, in the way you do things, uh, there will be a few transitions that you want to use all the time, and they're considered your favorites. Rather than navigating within all these transitions, all you have to do is just right-click on one of the transitions that you want to do, and just say, Add to my favorites. So the next time you come into the transition area, you will have your favorite transitions. So this is a very quick way of uh, making your, your favorite transitions show up every time you do your production. The next tab that we have are titles. And these, again, if you click on the titles, it will give you a, a preview of the title on the left side. Now, the titles are uh, uh, pre-canned. We give you a number of titles, but you can make your own and save them back up into this title area. And just as in transitions, you do have your favorites. So you can go in there and select your favorites. So I would just right-click on a title and say, Add to my favorites. And every time I go to uh, Use Titles, then I will have my favorites sitting there for me to use in, in, in the future. The next thing that we have is a Graphics button. The Graphics button gives you a number of basic graphic functions. For instance, color swatches. A lot of times you want to use a color swatch as a background inside of your, inside of your production for a title, for an intro, or for a picture-in-picture -picture effect to be on top of a color. So that's where you get those. Uh, we also support objects. We give you a number of uh, default objects which have uh, knockouts. So for instance, this birthday cake, the white would be replaced with your video, and you can scale those objects and put them around and animate them within the production environment. You can also import Flash. So we support SWF files from Flash, so these are animated type files. So if you click on these files, for instance, you'll notice that there's an animation capability to each one of these. Let me just see which one I have happening here. So you have these animations that you can bring in. And this, if, you're, if you use any kind of program to make flash animation, you can bring them in uh, that way as well. In the Effects tab, this is a tab where if you want to do some effects uh, within your production, uh, for instance, if I want to do a sketch effect, it has a little sample here of what a sketch effect does, what a ripple effect does. And these are effects that you drop onto your video clips for, uh, for, for uh, some sort of uh, impact into uh, your story. These effects are all keyframable, so you can change the way they the the way they show. You can change the way they they uh, 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 come up into your in your production. You can make it very subtle, or you can make it very obvious uh, if you want. So there's a number of effects here as well. In the audio tab on the bottom here, we support MP3 and WAV files. If you click on those, you can preview those within the uh, the preview panel. We also have an auto music feature. Uh, from a company called Smart Sound, which will generate music based on the length of your production. So, for instance, say you've put a production together that is a, a, uh, 
uh, retrospective or retirement production, uh, and it's five minutes and tw uh, 23 seconds and 10 frames long, what you can do is go into Smart Sound and it will match based on genre and tempo. It will make a, a score that goes into the back of that uh, production exactly to the same length. So it will fade in and fade out and it will do all that very in an automated fashion. We also allow you to change instruments within those tracks. So you can pick out of a single soundtrack, you can pick oboes and just have the oboes in the background. So that also allows you to make movies very, very quickly. Let me go down to the timeline here and a couple of timeline tools. In the uh, timeline itself, we have a couple of timeline modes. So we have a storyboard mode, which is a very quick and easy mode to be able to drag your clips in. So say, for instance, I just have a couple of clips here. I just drag those in here. And you can arrange your clips very, very quickly here. And as you select the clip, you can preview it up on top here to see how that clip looks within the, within the video itself. Now, each clip in the storyboard mode can be modified. So, for instance, you, you see here I have the clip selected, and it says clip next to the transport control here in the preview window, I can take the clip and just modify how I want that clip to appear. So there, it will only play between those two orange markers. So you can quickly and easily uh, identify your clip lengths and your in and out points. And you can go through storyboard mode and just keep dragging video and dragging things into the timeline. So let me drag another one here, make sure it's not the same ducks. Put this one in, and the same sort of thing. I can go in here and fool with these clips. By the way, this, this particular video was shot with a Canon, uh, Canon digital SLR uh, at 720p. So the, the quality and the depth of field is really, really amazing with that type of camera. So here I have, uh, have these, uh, these geese, I'm sorry. There's geese. Somebody's going to point that out that they're, they're not ducks. So you can go through your storyboard and just keep dra dragging things into there. Another mode within, within Video Studio, a more advanced mode that allows you to do a little bit more work, is the timeline view. So if I click on the timeline view, you'll notice now the ducks that I had in there. Let me just move this out of the way. The ducks that I had in there have shown themselves now, or ducks, the geese that I have in there have shown themselves in terms of clips. So you can see here there's a full clip there. Just as in storyboard mode, I can go up and I can select each clip and I can change the in and out points. But I can also do that just by dragging the ends of the clip in the timeline here. And you can see how it's changed like that. So there I have the geese. The next things that we have in the tools within the timeline are undo and redo. We have a quick capture button here. A lot of times when people are doing production, they'll want to bring in video. And rather than having to go back through the whole capture process, we have a very quick way of capturing. If I click on this button here, it will allow you to do a number of capture functions immediately. So for instance, on this, uh, fra this frame of video, I'd like to have uh, these geese as a photo. So I'll do a snapshot, and what that'll do is automatically generate a JPEG file or a BMP file. You can set that up uh, in the preferences. And that file then can be exported and used in uh, uh, PaintShop Pro, or you can use another application, even Microsoft Word, uh, drop that in, or if you want to use it for an effect within your video production. So that's that part. The next thing you can do is you can do a voiceover. This is very, very good. This is for a, a narration. So if you're doing a, a retirement video or, or, say, a birthday video and you want to narrate from the beginning to the end, you can click voiceover. And what will happen is the video will play and you'll be able to talk to the timeline. So you can go in there and quickly talk to the timeline. If you don't like what you did, you can delete it and try it again. So it's a very good way of adding voiceover directly. As I mentioned earlier, the, the, we capture from regular capture uh, uh, cards and, and capture adapters. We capture from DV tape, just as you saw in the capture tab, import from digital media, and import from mobile devices. And this quick uh, capture, quick import uh, dialogue is very handy. It allows you to work very quickly to be able to bring footage in and to make uh, snapshots from, from that footage. The next button we have, I won't open it, is a batch convert button. One thing that is not a glamorous thing to do in the, uh, in the video market, but very, very important, is to be able to take video clips of, varied, of all kinds of varied formats and be able to convert them into one format. So if I click on this, let me just do that anyway. If I click on this, what happens is, is a dialog opens, and it asks you for a number of files. So you say, add files. 
So these files can be MPEG-4, MPEG-2, they can be small files, large files, high depth files. You can bring all those varied formats into here and conform them into a single format. So if you're trying to output to your iPod and you have a whole bunch of video on your computer, you can put them all the files into here and select your output. Say, for instance, you want to go 3GP for your 3GP phones, flash files, uh, QuickTime movies, uh, MPEG-4 files. You can do all of that here. And what it will do is it will convert all those files into the single new format. Very, very important uh, uh, function within video. The next one we have is a painting creator. The best way to explain this is that if you have a travel video and you're trying to show a road trip from Malaga to San Sebastian, uh, you can go in and bring the map in and